Welcome back, welcome back. If you've just joined us during our announcements, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Christian Life Center, the gateway to heaven. Praise God. And now if you saw the announcements, I just wanted to bring emphasis to our prayers in this month of June. We've got prayers starting from this Friday. And we're going to be praying every Friday from now until the end of the month. And the prayers start at 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. So feel free to join us. The links will be shared on our platform. And if you're not a part of this, um, the ministries, platforms, WhatsApp groups, you know, feel free to contact us in our inbox and we'll share with you the link so that we can pray together. Praise God. We're just going to prepare our hearts now, even as we get into a time of the word. The word of the Lord in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is important what we hear. Amen. I want you to know that it is important what you feed yourself. And the Bible is saying that your faith will only come by through one way, through one means, and that is through the word of God. So today as, we, as you prepare to hear from the Lord, make sure there's no distractions. Hallelujah. Because it is that faith that will build you, that will catapult you to the next level of grace in your life. So I'm asking you to take down your, 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 your you know, take down your, prepare your notebooks, prepare your pens, your, whatever it is, and just enjoy being in the house of the Lord as we enjoy the word of God by our man of God, Pastor D. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Promise. 
darkness deep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. You never fail. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor David of Christian Life Center Malaysia. And I want to especially welcome you to service today. As you heard in the announcement, we have a very, very special month up ahead. Amen. We're going to spend a lot of time in prayer. As Pastor T already mentioned, you know, um, she said that, you know, on the next Fridays, between now and the end of the month, we're going to spend a lot of time praying, you know, enjoying the presence of God and communicating with him for that which pertains in this month. We also, once again, want to wish our parents a happy, happy anniversary. Mom and Dad, we want to let you know that we love you, we honor you. Thank you so much for being great examples, exemplary examples of the goodness of God and showing us how it's supposed to be done. 39 years of marriage. Wow. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. 
I get, you know, ministering God's word. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for teaching us. Thank you for teaching us the word. Thank you for, for, for being a blessing to us. Thank you for mentoring us. Thank you for coaching us. Thank you for correcting us. Thank you for the blessing that you are, not only to us, but to the entire CLC and to the entire body of Christ. Glory to God. Um, I want to welcome you once again, you know, to this beautiful new month. It is the month of June. It's a brand new month. Are you excited about a brand new month? God is about to do something new in your life. God is, supposed to, is about to do something unique in your life. So I want you to just go ahead and just say happy new month to somebody, even in the comment section. Just go ahead and type it there and say happy new month. Happy new month, happy new month, happy new grace, happy new blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we have entered into a new dispensation. Um, last month we were looking at the local church and we spoke a lot about the local church and the significance of the local church. And for us, the importance of you and I being established in the local church. Praise the name of the Lord. We say that that local church is here to be able to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. That that is our mandate. That is what we should do. Amen. And that theme doesn't end only in one month. I want you to know that that is something that we're supposed to carry all the way through the year. That is something we're supposed to carry all the way through our Christian walk. Amen. Even before the local church, we talked about spiritual alignment. How it's important for us to be aligned to the frequency of God. Hallelujah. To be aligned to his word. To position ourselves in a place where God can speak to us. Hallelujah. All these, all these things as the spirit of the Lord communicates to us are not things that we only keep for a small season. Everything that we add in a new month, a new grace, is something that is there to be able to empower you and carry you through even in that month. But in this month of June... I want to declare to us that this is our month of prophets. It is our month of prophets. Glory to God. I want you to get excited about that. Amen. And type in your comments and say, this is my month of prophets. Now, God is going to provide prophets in very different areas and in many, many areas of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. He's going to provide prophets in your job. He's going to provide profits in your income. He's going to provide profits in your business. He's going to provide profits in everything that pertains to you. Praise the name of the Lord. I use the plural profits for a reason because it's not going to be in one area, but it's going to be in various areas of our lives. Now, I want to share some key scriptures with you um, before we get talking a little bit more. Amen. I want to share some key scriptures with you that we're going to be meditating on in this month of June. Amen. If you are connected with us, thank you once again for, for being with us. Amen. The hand of the Lord is already with us even as you get to hear God's word and your eyes are open, your ears are open to receive God's word right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are receptive right now to hear the word and not to miss anything. In Jesus' name. I say this is our month of prophets. I want you to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 9. In fact, we're going to start from verse number 7. Praise, praise the Lord. These are some key scriptures we're going to be looking at in this month. And the Bible says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Hallelujah. He says, we are perplexed. To, per to be perplexed is like to be confused. But we are not in despair. Glory to God. Look at verse 9. The Bible says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. See, these were the words of Paul. This is what Paul was saying to the church in Corinth, and he was giving them this word of encouragement, that there may be trouble on every side, but I want you to know that you are not distressed. Around. I want you to know that you are not forsaken in the month of June. You may see
verse 16, the Bible says, For our light afflictions, oh, I love that, which is but for a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. He says, for our light afflictions, what is Paul talking about? Paul is talking about the tribulation you may go through. Paul is talking about the difficulty you have gone through. Paul is talking about, you know, that bad news that you heard. He's talking about, you know, that information that came to you and tried to disturb you, that tried to destabilize you, that thing that tried to pull you off course. And the Bible says that all these tribulations, he says all these trials, all these difficulties, everything that is going on in the world today, he calls it, he says, these light afflictions. I want you to know that what you're going through is a light affliction. Oh, you say, Pastor, but this thing is paining so much. Oh, but this thing is so difficult. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what tomorrow holds for me. I don't know what six months is going to look like. Or if they take away this, this money which I have, I don't know what I'm going to do. If they take away this job, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want you to know that these are light afflictions. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's what the word of the Lord says. So he says, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. He says, this affliction is for a moment. But it worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. I'm coming back to that in a moment. Verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. Oh, glory to God. The word of the Lord is saying that the weight of what you are going through cannot be compared to the weight of his glory. Oh my goodness, that ought to make somebody excited. I say the weight of the pressure that you're going through, the depression you may be going through, the difficulty you may be going through, yes, all the bad news that you have heard up to now, that weight, you see, that thing is like a weight. It can be on you. It can, be, it can feel like it's pushing you down. It can feel like it's wearing you. It can feel like, hey, I'm tired. I'm tired of the same situation. I'm tired of the same job. I'm tired of the same salary. I'm tired of facing the same issue day in and day night, day out. Amen. Every night, every day, I'm going through the same thing over and over. This pain in my body, it seems to not be going away. It's like a weight. It's like a weight. And the Bible says that that weight that you are feeling, that pressure that you are feeling, it is there only for a moment. And then he says that there is a greater weight. You know, as the word of the Lord was brought to me on the month of prophets, I imagined a scale. And I want you to imagine a scale with me. And in a scale, you are able to put two objects on a scale. And the way a scale works is that the one which is heavier is the one that is going to have dominance and pull down and push up the other one. Praise the name of the Lord. So if I put a 10 kilogram item on one side of the scale and I put a 50 kilogram item on the other part of the scale, the 50 kilogram item is going to outweigh the 10 kilogram item in such that, that the 10 kilogram item is worthless. Are you hearing me? Now the word of the Lord is saying that all the weight of your problems have been put on one side of the scale. All the, all the confusion, all the difficulty, everything that you experienced in January, everything from 2020, COVID-19, and everything that came along with it, all those things have been put like a weight. They've been put like a weight on one side of the scale. But the word of the Lord says that on the other side of the scale, there is a greater weight. Not only is it a greater weight, the Bible says that this is a greater weight and it's an eternal weight, meaning it's not going away. It says this one is going to be temporal, but this one is going to be eternal. And it says this one is going to be a greater weight. It's going to outweigh any difficulty, any trial, and anything that you have gone through in this year. I want you to know that the month of June is your best month yet. Yes, it's going to be better than January, better than February, March, April, May, and, and May. Hallelujah. Now we're in June. Praise the name of the Lord. And the month of June is going to outweigh all the previous five months. 
Oh, glory, 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 glory to God. Sister, it's not your time to cry. Brother, it's not the time to despair. I want you to celebrate now and say that this is my month of profits. This is my month of profits. There is a greater weight. There is a greater profit that is coming my direction that is going to outweigh. It's going to be like I, I don't remember what that difficulty looked like because the weight of the blessing, the weight of the glory is so much bigger, so much more beautiful than anything else that the devil tried to throw at you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're receiving that, I want you to shout a big amen. I want you to shout a big amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, the devil tried to lie to you and say that you are finished. He tried to bring you into this 2021. You say 2020 was a difficult year. We had lockdowns and we had viruses and we were in the house. And it seems like 2021 is becoming like a repeat of it. I want you to know those strategies that the devil tried to depress you, they will not work on you. Not in this month, not in this year. This is your month of profit. Glory to God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Hallelujah. Says this, for we know. He says, for we know that all things, how many things? All things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Oh, le bragadoski amante. He says, we know. I know, I know, I know that all things are working together for my good. I don't know what happened in January or February. I don't know what happened last year, but I want you to know. That word know is a Greek word, ido. It means, it means you have an awareness. You are aware. You know that something is working out for your good. Everything that you're going through is working out for your good. The bad things, the good things. The neutral things, the things you couldn't explain, the things that were unresolved. I want you to know when you put the story together, when they finish your story, it is all going to work together for your good. You're going to look back and say, oh, now I know. Now I know that that sickness wasn't there to kill me. Now I know that that difficulty was there to strengthen my prayer. Now I know that that trial was there so that I may be able to do something greater for God. We know, that is your confession this month. We know that all things, all things work together for good. Because we are called according to his purpose. We know it. We have, our, we have an awareness in our spirit of that, which is, of that which God is doing in this season and this time. Oh, hallelujah. Let me give you more scriptures. Amen. Joel chapter 2, verse number 25. Joel chapter 2, verse number 25. I hope you can all hear me well and you can all see me well. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, in the name of Jesus. Um, media is working on our sound, so I hope you can hear us very well. Amen. Joel chapter 2, verse number 25. The Bible says this. You may have heard these scriptures before, but I want you to hear them in new light. I want you to receive new rhema for this month. I want you to know that this is different for you now. I want you to receive these words of prophecy and know that these are applicable for you in this very time and this very season. Now, Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says this. It says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. The Bible says that he will restore. He will restore to you. There are some of you that are watching me today, and you say, Pastor, I had good opportunities. I should have done, but I missed. Restore all those things the devil tried to steal from you. Customers, all those ideas, all those things that should have been implemented, they were not implemented. 
will shake to fame in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know your way in this month of prophets in Jesus mighty name. The word of the Lord here says that he will restore unto you the years, the months. Oh, what did you lose in 2020? What did you lose in 2019? Did they reduce your salary? Did your money go down? The Bible says there is an accumulation. You see, in the natural, it looked like you were losing. But in the, in the realm of the spirit, there was an account being deposited for you because of your faithfulness. You see, this is our, this is our year to experience the faithfulness of God. Now, because of that faithfulness, in the realm of the spirit, I want you to know that there was a deposit. There were deposits happening in your account from 2020. There were deposits happening into your account in 2021. January, there was a deposit. February, there was a deposit. Yes, March and April and May, there were deposits. The month of June, oh, hallelujah, is your month to start withdrawing now. In the name of Jesus, withdrawing of those profits that God has got for you. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. When the Lord showed me this stuff, I was just leaping up and down, and I was just so excited because I know that the Lord has got something so beautiful in store for us in this month. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. Those scriptures very, very quickly. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 23. In all labor, listen to this, in all labor, there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. I want you to know, wherever you are laboring, wherever your hands are working, in whatever company you are involved in, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you shall see profit in this month, in the name of Jesus. I took all toiling and you don't receive profit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of hard work and you don't get anything from that hard work in the name of Jesus. I declare that robber, that devourer, that devil that has taken away from your produce. I come against it now in the name of Jesus. This is your month of profits. I say this is your month of profits. Everywhere where you labor, everywhere where you are involved, everywhere where your name is mentioned, I want you to know that there will be profits there. I want you to know that this time, when you get involved in that business, yes, you tried it before. It didn't work. But this time when you try it, this time when you apply yourself, this time when, oh my goodness, there is a grace that is at work in you now that will cause profits to operate in every labor you get involved in. Glory to God. So no more will you say, oh, I, am, I just earned peanuts. I'm working so hard and I'm just getting peanuts. No, 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 no. That is not your, that is not your confession this month. That is not your confession this month. Your confession must be different now. You see, your language must be different. I've told you many times that your life moves in the direction of your words. Yes, your life moves in the direction of your words. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 4. The Bible says where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. Where the word of the king is, it is established. Who can argue with the king? And I want you to know that that which you say, that which you declare, that which you are confessing, even in the comment section now, is that which is going to happen in your life. Hallelujah. So align your words now with the word of God. Confession is confessing the same thing in agreement with God. The Greek word is homologio. Hallelujah. So you are, you are siding with the word of God. You are siding with this prophetic word. You are siding with this anointing that this is your month of prophets. So everywhere you go in this month, I want you to square up. Yes, put your shoulders up. I want you to put your head up. If, you, if your head has been down the whole month because of crying, because of that weight of, of, of depression, because of that weight that has been pulling you down. This is not the time to, to walk with a bent with a bent shoulder. No, 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 no. With a bent back. This is your time to rise up. I want you to square up. I want you to lift your head up high and say in the name of Jesus, 
profitable life is mine in the name of Jesus. You say, I have a profitable family. Yes, I have a profitable house. I have a profitable business. I, I, I work in a profitable company. I earn a profitable salary. This is your language. I want you to add it in your prayers that every time you pray, the word profit must come out. The word profitable must come out. I'm going to, be, I'm going to get married to a profitable wife. I'm going to get married to a profitable husband. I want you to declare it in the name of Jesus. You say that I eat profitable food. I will drive profitable, I will drive profitable cars. I will wear profitable clothes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Profit, profit, profit. Is that what is coming your way in this month? In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord says where you will labor. Where there is labor, there must be profit. This scripture must be fulfilled in your life now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. What is profit? What is profit? Profit, according to accounting, accounting 101, is defined this manner. Praise the Lord. Profit describes the financial benefit realized when revenue generated from a business activity exceeds the expenses and costs and taxes involved in sustaining the activity in question. Let me repeat that. What is profit from accounting? Because that's where it comes from. Amen. Mostly it's used there. Amen. So profit describes the financial benefit. There's a benefit. The financial benefit that is realized when the revenue generated from a business activity exceeds, hallelujah, the expenses, costs, and taxes involved in sustaining the activity in question. Now, I don't want you to lose focus of that scale we talked about. When we are talking about profit, I want you to know that here, according to this definition, it's saying that profit is such that where on one side of the scale, there are costs, there are expenses, there are taxes. But on the other side of the scale, there is revenue. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that the revenue, if the revenue was small, for you to get profit, the revenue needs to exceed the cost. So the revenue must be heavier than the cost. The revenue must be heavier than the expenses. The revenue must be heavier than those taxes. I want you to know that whatever you're going to go through, because you are going to still go through things, the trials and the tribulations may not go away. In fact, they may still increase in the month of June. But I want you to know that it doesn't matter how heavy that cost is. I want you to know that it doesn't matter how heavy that tribulation is, that expense is. There is a greater weight. I say there's a greater weight. There's a greater revenue. There's a greater sell. There's a greater you know, profit that is coming your way. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to know, in simplicity, what you put into a business, in terms of profit, what you put into a business must be greater than what you take out. That is, that's when you can say that you have made a profit. What you are going to invest inside a business, hallelujah, must be greater. What comes in, the money that comes in, must be greater than the expenses that you push out. Glory to God. When, you are, when your finances are greater than those costs, then we can say that you are profitable. Glory to God. So in the same light, in the same way, I want you to know that your investment in the things of God in this month, your prayer, your fasting, your reading the word, that investment in the things of God is like that revenue. It is like those earnings that are being pushed on your scale to push up every single tribulation and trial that you may go through. Anybody that is in business will tell you that for you to make significant profit, there are two things that you must do. Either you do one of these two things or you do a combination of both these things. Praise the Lord. Number one, you must make sure that the revenue, if you can increase your revenue, then your profit is going to be greater. If you can increase your sales, oh, we're talking finance and accounting today. But if you can increase your sales, then your profit margin is going to be greater. Hallelujah. So you can concentrate on increasing your sales 
Or, number two, you can concentrate on reducing your costs and your expenses for you to have a greater profit. But the smart individual is one who's going to do both things. Increase the revenue and reduce the cost. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying to you, by the Spirit of the Lord, that in this month, you are going to invest more in the things of God. You are going to invest more in spiritual things. You are going to invest more in prayer. Listen, if you are praying for 10 minutes, it is high time that you now move to 30 minutes. If you've been praying for 30 minutes, it is now time for you to start praying for an hour. Whatever level you were in the month of June, if this word is going to manifest as a profit to you, you are going to invest. You are going to invest revenue, as it were. You are going to invest in the, in the realm of the spirits. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, let your mind, your affections be fixed on the things above. So in this month, we're going to concentrate on the things above. What are we doing? We are pushing in revenue. I hope you are getting the comparison. You are pushing in the good things that the Lord wants to deposit and equip you and strengthen you for. At the same time, you are going to remove all those things of the world. You're going to remove all those things that have been a snare to you. You're going to remove all those discouragements, all those evil words. You're going to remove depression. You're going to remove discouragement, frustration, stress. You're going to remove out of your mouth unprofitable words. Glory to God. All those things, you know, that has taken up your time. Maybe it's television. Hallelujah. Maybe it's an addiction to, to a you know, a specific program, and it's like you cannot do without it, or an addiction to something that you know is, is bringing harm to you. You are going to cut away the things of the world, and you're going to invest in the things of the word, and you're going to see a significant profit in this month in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that the profit margin that you are going to receive in this month is entirely dependent on you and your sacrifice to the things of God. And the sacrifice to turn away from the things of this world. Oh, glory to God. I want you to type in there one more time and say, this is my month. This is my month of profits. This is my month of profits. Glory to God. So God wants you to be profitable. God wants you to be profitable. And God wants you to create wealth in every area of your life. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. Glory to God. I want you to turn your Bibles there very quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The Bible says, I'll read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it is he that gives you the ability, the strategy for you to make profits, for you to gain wealth. I want you to know that profits and wealth are more than money. Profits and wealth are more than dollars and pounds and ringgits and dirhams. No, it's more than that. When God is talking to you about profits, it is not just your finances, but you're going to see profits in your health. You're going to see profits in your relationships. You're going to see profits in many spheres of your life. And we're going to go through some of those things in a moment now. Praise the name of the Lord. But I want to emphasize to you that profits and wealth as the word of the Lord is communicating to us in this month, is beyond money. It's beyond money. A person can have money, but if he doesn't have his health, it is useless to him. Glory to God. A person can have money, but if he doesn't have Christ, it is useless to him. It will do nothing for his salvation. He will be condemned to hell. Praise the name of the Lord. So wealth and profits are going to come in your life in various fears, in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. I want us to go through some of those areas. Amen. I remember a few, a few weeks ago, on our other platform, on Word Talk, we talked about dimensions of wealth. 
And the, and the Spirit of the Lord took me back to that teaching. And I want to share some things out of there so that you have a picture of that which God has got in store for you in this month. Praise the name of the Lord. Dimensions of wealth. If you're taking down notes, just put in there dimensions of wealth. Number one area that God wants you to be profitable is he wants you to be profitable in your spiritual life. God wants you to be profitable in your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible says this. It says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world, yet he loses his soul? You see, there are some people who have only concentrated on finances. They've only concentrated on money. They've always only concentrated on business and acquiring things. And the Bible says to them, the Bible says to you, he says, what good is it that you chased all this money, you chased all this wealth, and the Bible says that it profits you nothing. He says, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world? He gained all the businesses, the money, the promotion. You got all these things, yet you lost your soul. One of the most significant places God wants you to experience profit and increase is in the area of your spiritual life in your spiritual growth. Glory to God. The devil has used money. The devil has used physical things, material things, to deter people from the house of the Lord, to deter people from spiritual things. Now, does God want you blessed financially? Absolutely, yes. Does God want you increased financially? Absolutely, yes. But God wants you to invest much more in the spirit, much more than you will in the area of finance and business. Praise the name of the Lord. Your investment in the spirit is an investment in life itself. Why? Because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Glory to God. When you invest in the things of the spirit, you are investing even in your natural life because the realm of the spirit controls the realm of the natural. The Bible says that faith is a substance of things hopeful, the things not yet seen. Glory to God. But the one who has invested in the realm of the spirit is the one with increased faith, is the one that will attain something in the realm of the spirit even before it is manifest in the natural. Glory to God. I say to the church many times, whether you've got money or not in your pocket, you're going to say that I am rich. You're, whether, whether your body is feeling well or not, you're going to say that I live in divine health. Why? Because your faith, your investment in the realm of the spirit has already put an affirmant, an evidence. That's what faith is. It is that evidence that lets you know that those things you are trusting God for have already been given to you in the realm of the spirit. And there is a translation happening from the realm of the spirit to the natural for that thing to manifest in Jesus' mighty name. First, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says this. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you you see, he says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. He's communicating to us that the grace of God, the things of the Spirit can be multiplied in your life. Oh, my, my, my. There's a brother, there's a sister watching me, and all you are doing is multiplying connections. All you are doing is multiplying your network system. You are saying, if I can only know that brother, if I can only know that sister, if I can only befriend this person or that person, you know, then maybe I'm going to have a good job. If I can only submit my CV in that company. You see, some people are so busy networking, multiplying connections, yet the grace of God can be multiplied and that one is ignored. The word of the Lord here is saying that grace and peace be multiplied. God wants you to multiply the grace of God in your life. What you need is the grace of God. What is the grace of God? The grace of God is his goodness over you. The grace of God is that ability that works in you that causes good things to happen. Hallelujah. While somebody is net you are networking grace. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, there's a person with all the degrees. You know, there's a person with a master's, with a PhD, with a degree, yet they find it difficult to get a job. Yet they find it difficult to progress in that company. What that person needs is grace. 
What that, need, what that person needs is not another connection. You don't need another uncle. You don't need another somebody to help you. No, you need the grace of God to work in you. Even if somebody was to help you, I guarantee you, if you don't have the grace of God working in you, you find yourself in a good position, and very, very soon, you'll find yourself back to square one. Why? Because the grace of God is not in operation there. God wants you to invest in a profitable spiritual life, multiplying the grace of God. The word of the Lord teaches us how we can multiply this grace. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. He says, through knowledge. So, in this month, the more you invest in the knowledge of God, the more you invest in the scriptures, the more you say that I am going to... your stuff. They comfort me. They bring comfort to me. They bring joy and they bring peace to me. You can walk in the midst of a crisis with the peace of God guiding you. Glory to God. While everybody else is panicking, while everyone is running helter-skelters, I want you to know that the peace of God can govern your life. 
Hallelujah. While everybody is crying that there are no prophets in 2021, I want you to know that this is your month of profit where you're going to see significant progress in the realm of the spirit. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Let me share one more scripture on the spirit. Amen. Profitable spiritual life. Jesus operated in this frequency. Matthew chapter 9, verse 24. The Bible said, he said to them, make room. Jesus comes into a scenario, a difficult scenario. And this girl is dead, is found dead. And he gets into, this, in, into the midst of mourners and weepers. But listen to the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 24. And he said to them, make room. For the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. They ridiculed him and they began to laugh. You see, Jesus was able to see things other people could not see. Jesus was able to see sleeping where everybody saw death. You see, there was a weight. There was a different weight. People saw death, but Jesus saw life. You see, life was outweighing death. Are you hearing me? Healing was outweighing sickness. Profit was outweighing losses. That's what was happening here. And Jesus came into the room and he says, this girl is not dead. This situation you are going through is not dead. Yes, this difficulty you are going through is not the end of you. But the word of the Lord says that this is just a sleep. We just need to wake it up. This is your month of profits. It's time for us to waken up some of those things that have been sleeping for a very long time. Glory to God. Yes. Yes, some of those talents that have been sleeping for a very long time so that profits may be manifest in your life. Glory to God. Jesus saw something that they couldn't see. They saw a dead body, but Jesus saw a, a girl that would be awakened and that would be rejoicing. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27, on another occasion, we see Jesus is sleeping on a boat. The disciples are outside and there's a storm outside and the boat is rocking left, right and center and the winds and the waves. In the Bible says that the waves were coming into the boat. Glory to God. And the disciples were panicking. All they could see was chaos. All they could see is that we are going to perish. Jesus was asleep. Oh my goodness. There's somebody's posture in this month of June when everybody is panicking, when everybody is discouraged. There'll be some of you who are going to be in perfect peace. You'll be sleeping. You'll be saying, Lord, I thank you that I've got the peace of God that is at work in my spirit. This is my month of profits. Where everybody is closing down, where every shop is closing down, my business will not close down because of the investment, because of your profitable spiritual life. You see, the more you invest in the realm of the spirit, everything else in life, your natural life is going to bear much fruit in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, glory to God. So God wants you to have a profitable spiritual life. Number two, God wants you to be profitable in your soul. God wants you to be profitable in your soul. Glory to God. Third John, verse number two, the Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. You see, he wants your soul to prosper. Your soul consists of your mind. You see, your soul consists of your will and your emotions. So God wants you to prosper in your will, in your mind, in your emotions, in your intellect. God is talking about profit in your intellect capacity. God is talking about profit in your emotional capacity. Glory to God. God wants you to be able to be increased in knowledge, in your intellect. In this month, you're going to invest profit in knowledge, in your intellect. You're going to feed your mind. And you're going to feed your mind with the right information. Yes, with the word of God. But you're also going to educate yourself. You're going to be a reader. You're going to be one that loves knowledge. You say, Pastor, no, you know, I don't like reading. No, 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 no. If you don't like reading, you're not going to enjoy profit. If you don't like reading, the weight is not going to be balanced. Hallelujah. You may find that those with knowledge are going to be ahead of you. But God wants you to have knowledge. The Bible says in Hosea, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it says my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. He's talking about Christians. He says my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Some of you, you know how to pray. 
or you've been praying and you've been praying for a long time, but you don't want to invest in knowledge. You must have knowledge. As you are praying, you are praying with knowledge. You are praying with information. Glory to God. God is depositing in you information that you're going to be able to apply. Yes, school is important. Education is important. I'm talking beyond the word of God. Educating yourself on matters. It is important. Feed your intellect in this month. Feed your mind in this month. Be strong in this month with information. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It is no use if the Lord is going to bless you with so much finances. For example, if he gives you today $1 million, what will you do with it? What will you do with it? If you don't have knowledge, it will be a waste. And God doesn't like waste. God will not waste his blessings on somebody who, is, who doesn't have knowledge and will not be able to manage finances. There are many people who are trusting God, Lord, bless me. Bless me with a vehicle. Yet, you have never gone, you've never even applied for a driver's license. There's somebody who is praying, Lord, bless me with a husband. Bless me with a wife. Yet, you're doing nothing to prepare your home. Yet, you're doing nothing to prepare yourself to be a wife. Nothing to prepare yourself to be a profitable husband. Glory to God. So, invest knowledge in those areas where you want to see profit. Invest knowledge. You want to do business. The reason why your business has been failing in all those months, perhaps is because of a lack of knowledge. It wasn't because you were not praying. No. It wasn't because hands were not laid on you. No. Sometimes the problem is knowledge. You must invest in your intellect and in knowledge for your business to be able to profit you. A blessing that comes too early without knowledge is a blessing that can harm you. Glory to God. And God doesn't want to harm you with something that will come to you too early. Praise the name of the Lord. So get knowledge. Love knowledge. Love information. Knowledge is information. Be a person that wants to be knowledgeable. That wants to receive information. That wants to have ideas. True wealth comes from information and ideas. Glory to God. Money is not wealth. Somebody that receives money, it can disappear. But one who's got knowledge and ideas, his wealth will never run dry. Hallelujah. Because he's always got an idea on what he's going to do next. Glory to God. God wants you to be profitable in your soul, in your mind, in your will, and in your emotion. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. For today, I will give us one more. Praise the Lord. God wants you to have profitable health. Profitable health. Hallelujah. Number three, God wants you to have profitable health. Hallelujah. I mentioned earlier on, it is no use that you have all the money in the world, yet you are not healthy in your body. I was, I was mentioning, I think a few weeks ago, I said Stephen Jobs, who was the founder of Apple, he died at the age of 56 with over 10 billion net wealth. And all that money could not do anything to save him from pancreatic cancer. You see, money without profit in your health is useless to you. So you must be profitable in your health. You must concentrate on your health. You must see profit in your health. You must be a person that exercises, physical exercises. Yes, hallelujah. Not just prayer over your body. Some people are getting sick and are asking for prayer, wanting to be healed every so often, all because they just don't look after their body well. They don't exercise. They don't eat the right material. Hallelujah. They don't, they don't have a balanced diet. You keep eating junk, and now your body is fighting back against you. No. The Lord wants you to be profitable, even in health. Glory to God. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse number 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness prof is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. Now, the word of the Lord here says that bodily exercise profiteth little. And then he gives the comparison that com in, in comparison to, to godliness, um, bodily exercise profiteth little, 
But he still says it profits. He still says it profits. It profits little in comparison to godliness, but it profits you. Glory to God. So bodily exercise cannot be ignored. You must exercise. It's in the scriptures. Glory to God. It's in the scriptures that you would exercise, that you go to the gym, that you look after yourself. Why? Because God wants you to, wants to use that body for his glory. Do you not know that that body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You are, ho you are housing the Holy Spirit in that body. The Holy Spirit must be found in a beautiful, well-contained, healthy body. Glory to God. Not a body that is always tired. Not a body that is always lazy. Not a body that always wants to sleep. Not a body that cannot function well. A body that cannot move from one place to another. No. The Holy Spirit must function you know, effectively in a healthy, strong body. So you must exercise. You must exercise. I'm telling you, as a servant of the Most High God, that in this month, put a schedule for yourself that I'm going to exercise. Whether it's going to be once a week, or twice a week, or three times a week, make sure that in this month, you have scheduled some time for bodily exercise. Yes, you have scheduled some time for a good, balanced diet, educating yourself. What should I eat? What should I not eat? What should I abstain from? What should I, you know, um, consume more of? Glory to God. So that your body may be strong and healthy and that you may do more for Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's important. It's important in this month of prophets that you are profitable in your, in your body and you are profitable in your health. Glory to God. We read it earlier on. Amen. Um, that the body, the, the word of the Lord says in 3 John chapter 2, he says that I pray that you may prosper in all, in all things and that you may be in health. You may be in health. You're going to speak to your body and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that my body is a profitable body. Hallelujah. Yes, you say my body is a profitable body. I have control over my body. I have control over what I eat. I have control of where, where I go. I have control that I can wake up and pray. I have control that I can do the things I could not do before. Hallelujah. You have control and you are in health. So you declare to yourself, I have a profitable body. I have, a profit, I have profitable health in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to discuss many of these things in this month. Glory to God. In the month of prophets and in the various areas that God wants us to profit in. And we're going to implement some things in this month. Those of you that are part of the ministry, we're going to create programs where we're going to be investing in the spirit. We're going to create programs where we are investing in our mind, in knowledge. And we're going to create programs that we're going to invest even in our body and various other areas. Because this is our month of profits. And we want to see significant profits in our life in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I pray that you have received this word, this prophetic word for you today. I want you to know that this brand new month is going to be good to you. This brand new month is going to be a blessing to you. And that you're going to enjoy this month. It is indeed going to be your best month yet in this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the grace of the month of June. I thank you, Lord, that we have entered. And we are so grateful that we have the privilege and the ability to enter. We thank you, Lord, that you've got something new for us in this month. You have a profit for us. I thank you, Lord, that the glory, the weight of your glory is going to outweigh any challenge and any difficulty. In the name of Jesus, there is somebody that is watching me right now, and they are on the verge of giving up. They are on the verge of saying that I can't carry on. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that the weight of glory, yes, oh God, may start to lift away every burden and every hurt and every, everything that has been a weight on their back, a weight on their mind, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that the burdens are lifted off 
and your glory begins to shine on them now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, that we are walking, oh God, from one level of glory to another, from one dimension of your grace to another dimension of your grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare, oh God, that your children shall see profit. I declare, oh God, that they shall increase. I declare, oh God, wherever they are involved, the glory of the Lord will be shining. The glory of the Lord will be increased in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, O Lord, that your word will not come back void. But each person under the sound of my voice hearing me today will come back with a testimony in this month in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, O Lord, that this is your word and it is done and established in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. If you receive the word today, I want, you, I want you to just type a big amen in agreement, in agreement that indeed that things are going to be different for you in this month. Listen, I want you to know that these, these words that I speak to you today, these words come from the realm of the spirit. I know what I'm talking about. I know, and I know what God showed me concerning us and concerning you, especially in these last days, in this month. This is a time when the church is going to rise up. This is a time of great revival. This is a time when the churches are going to be filled up significantly. Yes, I know that which we are going through now with this lockdown, they are just temporal. They're just temporal. There is coming a great revival. I'm talking to you. Perhaps you're a minister of the gospel and you are hearing me. I want you to know that the church of God is moving forward and is going to progress in a significant way. Perhaps you're a leader and you're involved somewhere. I want you to know that this is the time when God wants to transfer. The Bible talks about the transference of the wealth of the wicked to the just. I want you to know that this is the time of profit. This is the time of profit. Why? Because the transference of these finances, the transference of this glory needs to be in the, in the hands of the children of God because of what God intends to do in these last days with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you yield yourself to this word, I want you to know that that profit is going to come to you significantly. Align yourself to God's agenda. And when you align to his agenda, God is going to make you a conjoint pipe to be a blessing to this world. My name is Pastor David, and I want to thank you so much for listening to me today and for receiving the word of the Lord today. I know that it has impacted you and it has changed you. If you, if you um, never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I want you to inbox us so that we can pray for you. I want to get in touch with you. Amen. If you haven't been in church for a very long time, you haven't been committed, I want you to, do, I want you to know that this is a time for you to get connected. This is a time for you, you know, to be found in the house of the Lord. This is a time for you to be with other brethren. Because that which God is doing, you must be connected to it as well. See, Jesus Christ is coming back again. The rapture is soon, is very, very soon. And you need to be found in the house of the Lord so that you may, we may go together and be caught up in the skies with Jesus. Hallelujah. So if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, or you know that you... You haven't been as committed as you, as you should have been. And you've heard this word that you're supposed to be profitable in your spiritual life. I want you to inbox us. Send us a message. We're going to pray for you. We're going to help you to, to get back on track so that the Lord may, may speak to you. Amen. And, and bring you to the place where you're supposed to be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to share the grace even as we close this afternoon in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy and wealth shall run after us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I am blessed, and my family and your family is blessed. In this year, 2021, our season of experiencing God's faithfulness. Amen, amen, and amen. Shalom, and God bless you.